Welcome back to another video. This, I'm just going to uh, give like an update on how to connect Plex or Jellyfin to a Samba share. This is gonna be an update on the last video that I made about TrueNAS with connecting like Plex or Jellyfin to an SMB share. So let's go to the old internets here and connect to our TrueNAS server. And now in here, uh, we're, we're kind of picking up like where we left off, right? Except this, we're on the latest version now instead of 22. And that was the one that had the host path verification that we could uncheck. And they removed that in the newer ones, but the apps now have an SMB share. So if we go to our data sets um, in the media data set. This is where we left off on the last one and we changed the permissions in here. So what we want to do is just revert this back to normal. So this, this share right here, I left this one alone. So we're essentially just going to replicate the permissions for that one. So we can go in here. We'll change this owner to root, change this to root. Beautiful, apply owner, apply group. And we're just going to change the, uh, the preset here to open. And there we go. Awesome. Everything's fine. So we will save the permissions reclusively because we have lots of files in here now. Child data sets. And we are going to save the access control list. So now everything is reset, but the owner and groups did not change. They're still set to apps. So that way Plex is the owner of this. But what we want to do is change that back to just being normal. So we're going to go back in here and change this to root again. Perfect, apply owner, apply group, and save access control list. Now everything is back to normal as it should be, but if we go to this data set right here, we can see that we have a mask and we have a user for myself. So we're gonna add those ones to this, so that way everything is exactly the same. So we'll just click add, that'll just be a mask, and we'll give it read, write, and execute. And add another one, and this is going to be a user, and it's going to be me, which is right here. Read, write, and execute, perfect, so we can add the permissions reclusively. So that's going to be for every file and folder as well as here. And uh, th there we go. We're just going to save the access control list and that's it. That's done. This is completely reset as if you've just made um, just like a, a new share and you've added yourself as a user. That's it. That's all we've done. Now you can see that this is still being used by Plex. So we're going to go to apps and we're going to go to Plex and we're going to edit under the application info. And we're just going to scroll down. This is the additional storage that we added before. So we're just going to delete that completely. It's gone. Now we're gonna add a new one. And in here, this is part of the newer, newer version of TrueNAS, is we have an SMB share. We're gonna add the mount path. So we'll just do that as forward slash SMB in all caps, so that way it's easy to distinguish. Now the server is just going to be truenas.local. Uh, because we're running this locally, obviously, and then um, Plex will just go through its own port. And the share, which here, the Plex share that I have, it's gonna be Mount Galaxy Media. That's the data set, and we have that mounted as Plex. So we're going to type in Plex, and it is case sensitive. Now, for the username and password, this is just going to be the credentials of the username and password that we access the SMB with. This is obviously your username and your password. Now we just gotta type in password uh, and that's it. Awesome, so we can update that and that's completely done. Now it's going to restart Plex and once that comes back online, we're gonna go to the web portal. And obviously there's gonna be issues because we've just removed the, uh, like the old data set that was there. We'll go to movies, click the little three dots. We'll go to manage library and we'll go to edit. And now for the movies, we can add folders and it's no longer going to be under the, uh, the old media directory that we had that I showed you how to make in the last video. Instead, it's now going to be SMB and movies. And because this is just going straight to the, uh, like the Samba share, it's the same directory. So you don't have to import or move any of the movies or anything like that. So we'll just save that. We'll repeat this for TV shows, manage library, edit, add folders, and we'll browse for media folder and we'll go to SMB and TV shows, add, save, and then lastly, we'll do music, manage library, edit, add folder, browse for media, SMB share, and music. Perfect, add, 
save, and now it's done. So you can see up here in the corner, the activity, it's now scanning for all of these library changes because we've just changed where the library is, and it's just gonna find the new location for all of these files. That's basically it. So we can just go to movies. Um, we'll just go to randomly pick. Uh, let's just pick a movie. And there we go. And it's playing, we can skip ahead. Um, it's obviously taking longer than it normally does just because it's scanning the entire library in the background, but you can see that it is, it's fully working. So that's basically that. You can see everything is updating right now. So it's changing everything as it goes because it's finding the new location of all of the files that are already currently there. Now, what we can do is if we wanted to add something, we'll just open Finder and we'll go to Network. We can access TrueNAS. Uh, this is also where you'd find that name. So this is truenas.local when we're entering the server. So when you go to your network settings on Mac OS, Windows, or Linux, it's all gonna be the same kind of thing. When you're connecting to your TrueNAS server, Whatever the name is here, that's what you're gonna be entering for your server and then dot local for the SMB. So we'll go there, we'll go to Plex, and then in here, uh, these are all the same folders. So if we have a new movie or something, we can just drag it into the corresponding folder if that's how you organize it. That's it. So this is the update on how to do, uh, well, just everything that we did before in the last video. This is just how to do it on the newer versions that no longer have that safety check. Uh, because before under the apps, we would go to uh, settings and we would go to the advanced settings. And then in these little check boxes, there was a box to uncheck the host path safety check. And we, we don't want that on because we're connecting an SMB to an app or an app to an SMB. You know, it's not ideal because you could change something on the SMB that the app is not prepared for. Plex isn't something that suffers from that issue, but uh, Nextcloud could be. If you were to connect Nextcloud in the same instance that I had it before and we changed a file, Nextcloud could be syncing that file to something else, like a different computer or a phone or whatever that's connected to it. And if I update the file through SMB or delete a file or something like that, it, it's gonna end up uploading like a corrupted file to uh, whatever devices are connected. And if you have your entire system backing up, that could corrupt your entire operating system. So that's why it's not there because it's dangerous to use like that. In the instance of Plex where it's only reading the files that are there, it doesn't matter at all. But it's nice that in the new version they did add the option to actually add that SMB as the directory straight from uh, like the app settings. Now if we go back to apps here I'll just show you again we can discover apps and we'll look for Jellyfin. We'll just install that real quick. We can confirm and agree. Now in here, just like before, we're gonna leave everything exactly the way it is. We're not gonna to touch anything until we get right here where it says additional storage. We're going to add and we're gonna just do the exact same thing that we did before. So here would be the SMB share. The path is gonna be forward slash SMB. You can name it whatever you want. I just do all caps like this just so it's easy to distinguish when you're trying to find the files. Server again is truenas.local. The share in this instance would be Plex because that's where everything Thing is sitting and then the username and password is going to be the username and password that we set up in credentials from the last video and you get to listen to what my password sounds like now we can just go down to the bottom and we can install this app now the only reason i don't use jellyfin is because i have a samsung smart tv and i use uh, like the integrated apps into the TV and Jellyfin doesn't have an app for Samsung TVs. Once they do, I am fully switching to Jellyfin. I'm not using Plex at all. That's, that's literally the last thing that I'm holding on to Plex for is the app that they have for Samsung TVs. Uh, Jellyfin has free HDR and everything, so it's significantly better than Plex because you don't have to pay for uh, Plex Pass. And I absolutely love that. You know, don't hate too much in the comments there. I do love Jellyfin as the, uh, the superior choice. I just use Plex because it has more apps it's more diverse across different devices all right now that it's running we can go to the web portal and like the last video there the port has been fixed so now it just connects automatically you no longer have to change that so we can pick english uh username and password i don't know we'll just use some kind of like default password or something uh password confirmation yeah sure let's let's do a confirmation password uh we'll hit next we'll add to the media library media type is going to be movies we're gonna click on this little plus right here. And now right here we have the SMB, that's the one that we just made, and movies. Now we can click OK and OK again, and we'll add another one. This here would be music. So we'll click on the little plus, we'll go to SMB and we'll click music and OK. And okay, beautiful. Do the last one here, which is going to be the TV shows which on Jellyfin. It's just shows. I love that a lot more. It's a lot more clean having everything with only one name. There we go. We pick the TV shows. We're all good. Everything's fine. Now we can click next. 
and we'll just leave all this the way it is. We can click next again and finish. Now we can enter with that uh, username and password. Oh my God, what was the username? Uh, my Jellyfin user, maybe? And then whatever that password was, right? That was right, right? Right? Seems to be working. Hey, it worked. Okay, that's what it was. All right, so it's uh, syncing the libraries and everything, so that's cool. Now over here, we have our movies, music, and TV shows. So we'll just pick movies here, see what's loaded. And obviously the best movie ever made has loaded first. Beautiful. And again, this is gonna take a really long time because it's scanning everything in the background, but you can see it works totally fine. And it's loading it straight off of the SMB so it no longer has direct access to that share. You can't do that. Uh, but, th but that's it, like it works perfect. Everything, everything is good. And now the whole thing is set up. So through future updates and everything, it just, it stays working. I mean, it, it already stayed working because obviously mine was working before and I'm currently on version 24. But when you're setting this up on version 22, you have that host path safety check that you can bypass. And that's how I was able to set it up. But now um, on version 23 or newer, you have to do it through this SMB by adding it to the actual app itself. Uh, so there's an update for Plex. So I guess I can update that, let that go in the background, and hopefully you found something useful here. Uh, you know, you could uh, subscribe to the to the channel if you want, or uh, like the video. That's cool. Um, or or you know, just don't do any of it. I'm not telling you what to do.